Assalamu alaikum, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this session, we will continue our discussion on verbs. Specifically, we will talk about the concept of a doer. This is the subject or the fa'il. We'll also talk about how to negate a past tense verb. In earlier lessons, we've talked about a noun sentence or a nominal sentence. A nominal sentence is one which starts with a noun and it must have a subject and a predicate. In other words, it must have the mubtada and predicate which is khabar. So, for example, we can say a rajulu jalisun. This is the mubtada or the subject and then the khabar or the predicate is jalisun. So, the man is sitting. These are the two requirements of a noun sentence. After that, we can have additional information such as the man is sitting on the chair. Ar-rajulu jalisun alal kursi. A verb sentence or a verbal sentence must start with a verb. So, we will always have a verb or the fi'il which comes in the beginning. The verbal sentence must at least have a verb and the doer. So, the doer can be called the subject. In Arabic, the doer is called the fa'il. So, we can write fa'il like this. The fa'il is the doer of the action. In some cases, we can also have the object. The object is the entity on which the action is happening. We will talk about objects in a verbal sentence later. Not in this lesson, in one of our subsequent lessons. Now, if we think about it, each word in the conjugation that we have done earlier is in fact a sentence. If we say daraba, this means that he hit. So, he hit is a sentence. If we say darabat, that means she hit and that in of itself is also a sentence. But if we simply say daraba, we know that he hit, but how do we specify the he? The way we can specify the he is adding it. So, when we say daraba hamidun, the doer of the action is hamidun and the doer or the fa'il always needs to be in rafa form. So, that's why you see this un over here. Daraba hamidun means that hamid hit. Now, let's look at several examples. Dakhala means he entered. Muallimun means a teacher. So, this means a teacher entered. Next, we have Farih Tunna. So, Fariha means that he was happy. Farih Tunna means all of you females were happy. So, this in of itself is a sentence. Then we have Dahikata. So, Dahika means that he laughed. Dahikata means that the two females laughed. Kataba means he wrote. Katabal Muallimu means that the teacher wrote. The difference between this Al Muallimu and Muallimun is that here we have a common noun. So, a teacher entered. This could be any teacher. Whereas, Katabal Muallimu, here we are talking about a specific teacher. So, that's why we say the teacher wrote. And then we have Qara'at Fatimatu. Qara'at means she read. And then who's the person doing the reading? That is Fatima. And we know that Fatima is the fa'il or the doer because of this Dhamma or Pesh over here. So, this means that Fatima read. Moving now to the negation of a past tense verb. We negate a past tense verb using ma. So, fariha means he was happy. Ma fariha would mean he was not happy. Next, we have lima ma akalu ilal an. So, ilal an is a new term. You've actually seen each of these. So, ila means two or two words. Al an means now. So, ilal an actually means till now. Akala means he ate. And hopefully from your conjugation, you remember that when you have this vow and alif at the end, this refers to th 
third person masculine plural. So, akalu would be they ate. And we've just learned that ma refers to a negation in the past tense. So, ma akalu is they did not eat. Lima means why. So, the overall translation becomes why did they not eat till now? That is it for this lesson.